So for people that aren't used to it, you know, roofers that aren't used to this and they're thinking, gosh, and now I'm going to have to take time and I'm going to have to educate my customers. Uh, you know, do you provide resources like some sort of template or do you give coaching and tips on how to educate the customer and how to make that a concise process that any roofing sales guy could do? Yes. I have an entire chapter in my book, Level the Playing Field, that teaches you how to do pre-adjustment conferences. I have an entire chapter in my book. Uh, by the way, I give the book away for free. I have an entire chapter in my book on how to write smart estimates, how to write an estimate. And so as contractors, we know which line items the claims adjusters are going to omit and the ones that they're going to include. Like they're going to omit uh, starter and hip and ridge mm -hmm. as an example, right? It's no mm -hmm. surprise when you get back an estimate from a carrier and, the, and they've omitted these two line items. So when you include these line items in your estimate, then what you want to do is, is you want to write a sentence or a paragraph or whatever in the F9 notes, click F9 on your computer and it pulls up the notes and you type a sentence or a paragraph, or you can already have it already pre-typed if you want to have a template or a, um, you know, a macro in Xactimate and where you explain and justify the inclusion of every one of those line items that you know that they're going to omit not based on your opinion, but you explain and justify using facts and evidence. And the gold standard for evidence is objective third party source material. So in your F9 notes, you want to be concise and you want to provide credible facts and evidence and explain and justify the inclusion of the line item. It's the exact same thing I used to teach claims adjusters because they have a file examiner that's going to review their estimates as a claims adjuster when I upload my file with all my photos and everything. If I knew that there was gonna be a line item that the file examiner may have a question about, I would explain and justify using facts and evidence. I'm teaching the contractors and the PAs to do the exact same thing that I used to teach con uh, adjusters to do back in the day so that the adjuster, what it does is it greases the rails and it makes, it makes it easy for the adjuster to say yes, because you've given him the entire argument that he needs to make the argument with the file examiner to get it approved. You've done his job for him. So what? So what's our objective when we meet a claims adjuster? To frustrate the adjuster or is our objective to make it easy for him to say yes? Mm-hmm. Our objective is to make it easy for him to say yes. So we create smart estimates. We visit with the consumer beforehand and we set expectations. We educate them as to how the process works because the consumer has no, no idea what to expect. And if we're not the ones setting expectations, then the claims adjuster will be. So who has the best, the consumer's best interest at heart nowadays, the majority of the time. The contractors. The professional contractors, mm -hmm. not the liars, cheats, and thieves. They mm -hmm. have their own best interests at heart. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about those guys. I'm talking about the professional contractors out there, the ones who carry insurance, the ones who actually have an office, the professionals. Mm -hmm. Those guys have the, the consumer's best interests at heart.